Hello, class. Mr. Graziano here. Uh, today's assignment, we're going to be working on a logo, creating a logo design using one letter. Um, now, we, these are some real identifiable logos. And what I love about logos is just think about that. One letter or two letters can quickly identify an organization, a company, a business, a character, whatever. And when you look at these really quickly, I mean, everybody can see right away, University of Wisconsin, okay? Under Armour. I don't know if you realize this, but Under Armour is a U and an A. They took two letters and combined them. Obviously, McDonald's is our favorite, Green Bay Packers. You think it's pretty simple, but it's a stylized G. It's done in a certain way that it's identifiable as a Green Bay Packers. Of course, Superman. A few people that uh, in Wisconsin here, most people would see this as Fleet Farm. Uh, Notre Dame University, of course, these guys, we don't want to talk about them, but the Bears, okay, and then uh, the New York Giants, which is a football team. So think about this. These all look fairly simple, but somebody came up with these ideas and created their own unique logo, and that's what I want you guys to do. Now, in order to do that, this just didn't magically pop into somebody's head, or this didn't just magically pop into somebody's head. The artist, the creator, the designer, they worked at it, okay? And that's what you're going to do. So what you're going to do is first is you're going to do a brainstorm list of ideas. And by brainstorm list, you're just going to start sketching ideas out and a lot of them. And the more you sketch ideas out, the more ideas you're going to come up with. So for example, let's say I take this sheet of paper and what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the initials of your name. Could be your first initial, last initial, even your middle initial. I don't care. Okay. Uh, but my, my initials are CG and I just think a G is more interesting looking than a C. So I chose a G. So think about this. What you're going to do is you're going to start coming up with different G's. Now, if I put a G here and this is a pretty basic looking G. Okay. Pretty basic. Nothing too, uh, crazy about it okay uh but now i'm going to tr try variations of that g so for example i might say you know what i'm going to make a g that is a little bit more square so maybe i'll do something like that or maybe i'll say you know what i want my g to be really round like a perfect circle so maybe i'll draw a perfect circle put a little gap in here and then i'll do this okay now Sometimes people say, I don't want a skinny line of a G. I want more of a, they call them balloon letters or box letters. So what you could do is this. To do a box letter, or balloon letter, you could draw a very light version of your letter. Let's say like that. Okay. Then just draw a little outline around it. So I go like this. I draw an outline around it. Like so. And then I just erase that inside letter. And I've got my letter that looks like that. Okay, so there's lots of ways to do that. So here's a G that's totally round and so on. Now, to come up with different ideas, you have to try a lot of things. So first of all, I've got a regular G, a square G, a round G. Think about other shapes you could have your G in. How about this? How about if I have a G that's sort of uh, like this? It's like a, I guess it's almost like a tooth. So it's, it's wider on the bottom and a little narrower on the top. Or you might say, well, I know I'll do a G that's more like a triangle. So maybe I'll do my G like this. Maybe I'll have that bar coming across. Okay. Now that's one that's right now we're working on a capital G, but you know, other ways to make G's, you got your cursive G, you got your capital cursive G, you've got your small G like this. Okay. Different types of G's. So, so far I've got a regular G. Now I might go with a short fat G. So maybe I do something like this and I create this unique logo, okay? A short fat G. So let me just show you all the G's that I came up with and kind of my line of thinking and how these ideas came around and then how I got those ideas and I came up with these logos, okay? These are logos that I all came up with based on my drawings. Okay, so what I have here is this. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. So I'll just go through my line of thought. You can kind of see how I came up with this. So first I have my regular G. Okay, then I squared it. Then I squared it and made it a box letter. Then I made it more of a tooth. Then it became kind of a pyramid. Then I did a short fat one. 
Then I did a cursive one and a cursive one with extra loops and a capital cursive one. Now this cursive one, I made some areas a little fatter, sort of like a ribbon, a little thinner and so on. Okay, this one here, I just said, hey, I'll make a G out of like logs. So I drew sort of like logs to make my G out of logs. Then I was thinking logs. Hey, what if I made a G that's like a building? So I made this G that looks three dimensional, more like a box. Then I made a G that looked kind of like a worm or a caterpillar or something. Then I thought, then I was doing that and I think hey, it kind of looks like a, a swirl or a, a spiral. So this G is kind of a spiral. This kind of reminded me of the Packers. I decided to make four of a football shape. And then I thought, you know what? Since this is a triangle, what if I made a pyramid? I made a G that looks more like a pyramid. Then since the pyramid's like a building, I decided let's make it more like a box. Then the box kind of reminded me, you know, when you go downtown or like Milwaukee or some big city and you got these buildings with windows. I'd been in Milwaukee one time where they, they actually lit windows up in the building to form letters. And I thought that'd be cool to make a, a grid that has a G in the grid. Then I thought, hey, you know what? What if I made the G, the grid look like it's laying on its side? Okay. Now, earlier I mentioned prompts. Here are some prompts. Okay. Prompts. What I did is I took a list of words. Okay. And I took an adjective and I wrote its opposite. So fat and skinny, bald, hairy, smooth, rough, good, evil, lazy, self-discipline, rich, poor, and so on. They might say, what does this have to do with anything? Well, I, here's one here that was just wet and dry. And I thought, how can I make a G that's wet? So I decided here's a G that looks kind of like, I don't know, like jello. It's kind of wider on the bottom. And I put like a little puddle of water. Here's a G that has water drops on it, okay? Here's a G that looks like it's reflecting in a lake. So anything to do with water wetness. Then I said, you know what? Another prompts are this, are shapes. So I have already made a G that's circular. I can make an oval, I can make a square, a rectangle, a triangle, a parallelogram, a uh, hexagon, a shield shape, all kinds of shapes, a drop of water shape. And I thought, hey, I'll make a shape. It's kind of like a rectangle with sides coming in. Then I did another version of that right here. Then I thought, you know, that reminds me of these, um, uh, what do you call, nuclear reactors. They're kind of shaped like this. And I thought, oh, it's like a building. So I did a cylinder, G. Then I just went totally off track and thought, I'm going to do one that looks like it's made out of Japanese strokes or letters. So it gets fat and, and skinny. Now I did a, a lowercase G. And then I thought, hey, Superman. Now that's not a G, but I could take that Superman idea and put my G in a in a in a um, a border. So if I have a G in a border like this, maybe I could put a G that's in a square border or a round border. Now here's a G that I put a circle, and I decided to take that part and kind of go through here. So it's kind of almost like a cursive, but yet it's not. And then that's one version I could do. Uh, you know, fatter and skinnier areas. Here's a G that's made up of ants. Okay, let's go back. Here's a cursive G. And I thought, hey, they'll do the cursive G, only I'll make it look like this is passing underneath here. So all I did when I drew it, I drew it over the top, and then I just erased some areas like this, and now I've got my G that looks like a knot. It looks sort of cursive. Then I thought, here, I'll go back to that spiral G, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll fill in the background so the G is white and the background is dark, which would give me a negative. And then here's a negative G. It's a G that was taken out of sort of a, a, a angled square. And what I did is I got rid of the G and left the space behind it. Okay. Here's a real square G. Here's a G that's real uh, smoky or, sm or kind of like, uh, you know, it's wavy. Uh, here's a G that instead of a, um, a rectangle, I put it in this sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, like a wedge shape here. But... Then I looked to some of my prompts and I thought, how can I make some other things? Like here, maybe a hairy G. So here's my hairy G. Uh, maybe, let's say, rich or poor G. So my rich G might be uh, made of gold, look like a gold bar. Or my poor G might have cracks in it, like this one. So I put cracks, or this could be my old G. So I've tried a bunch of things. Here's a cursive G, and I love the flow of it. So I thought, hey, this kind of reminds me of like uh, tall blades of grass or leaves. So I had a leaf on here and I got this very floral looking G. Here's another G. I just experimented with the loops a little bit. Uh, 
or my prompts. I went back to my prompts and one of my prompts was good and the other one was evil. And I thought, I'm making an evil G. So here's a G that's got a little fork tail, kind of like a little devil. And I thought I'd put a little spike off of there. So I've created another G. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up with all these ideas. Okay? A lot of them. So get a piece of scrap paper. I'm trying to make this go back in for you. Get a piece of scrap paper. Okay? And come up with all of your G's. Okay, now this is the deal. This is how I'm going to grade you. Pretty simple. Okay, if you do zero, you get a zero. Zero to nine is an F. Okay, you got to do ten to get a G to get a D. A C is between twenty and twenty-nine ideas. A B is between thirty and thirty-nine. An A is between forty and forty-nine. And an A plus is fifty different ideas. I didn't even count mine. I got about forty right now. But I it, the reason I have you do so many is the more you do. The, the greater uh, ideas you're going to have to pull from. And one idea, like this one led to this one, this one led to this one, and led to this one, led to this one. Eventually, that one led to here. And then I did this pyramid version of a G based on this design right here. Okay, This design, which had a building, led me to this one, which led me to this, and I did that design. Okay, Remember this one down here? This design here, here's that design. And then here's a loop. I love this loop on this letter. And I thought, I'm going to do this. And then I filled the loops in with letter with colors. Last, I got a silly one here that I did with ants, which reminded me of like an insect. So I thought, hey, how about instead of ants, I make like a centipede, some kind of long thing with legs. So here are my logos that I created. No one else's ideas. These are my ideas. And that's the thing about the beauty about creating. You create something that's yours. It didn't exist until you made it exist. So a couple things, just some points. Number one, to be creative, come up with a lot of ideas. Visually brainstorm. Just draw, 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 draw. You can't get them wrong, okay? Most ideas that you will do aren't going to be that good. I mean, I got a lot of ideas on here and a lot of them I'm not going to use, but... In those ideas, you're going to find something that's good. And don't be caught up in, I can't come up with good ideas. You can, but it takes effort. Use prompts when you get stuck. Everybody gets stuck. Okay, don't give up. So when you get to 20, 30 ideas, you're going to go, I can't come up with any more. You can't. So make your prompts. Here are some of my prompts. Okay, lazy, rich, poor, dark, light, colorful, black and white. Let's just use that dark, light one. Dark and light. I like the idea of a black and white G. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take, um, let's say I take a regular G. I'm going to make it kind of a square G like this. Very square looking. I like this part being way up high. So I make this G. It's almost like a square box. Okay. Then I'm going to put that in a box like so. Okay. Then I'm going to divide that box in half. And on one side, I'm going to make the G black. So I'm going to fill that in and make the G black. And on the other side, I'm going to make the background black. So it's like a it's almost like a yin yang thing where on one side it's black and the other side it's white. Okay? So here's another logo idea that I've come up with here just by experimenting. And the prompt was the word black and white. I thought I make a logo that's black and white. They might say these are silly looking. Yeah, they're silly looking. So what though? All the ones you saw earlier, all these ones that here were silly at one point. Think about this. Really creative idea. And it's so identifiable. Anybody to see this knows oh, it's Under Armour. They can just tell one boom, Under Armour. But I don't even know how many of you knew that it was Under Armour. And this was two letters. Okay. Superman. Okay. So here's my logo now. That's black and white. It's a G that's black and white. Now, obviously, it's just a sketch. But uh, it's kind of a creative idea, a creative way to do a G. All right. So I'm experimenting. Now, do I like this one? Do I want to do it? Eh, not really. But it was fun coming up with the idea. And that's what I want you to do is have fun. So somewhere in your search, you're going to come up with some really good nuggets, some good pieces of gold, it's like panning for gold. So somewhere in your search, there's a gold nugget. Which ones are those going to be? 
I think these are my gold nuggets, but there's probably a lot more in here that I could be using. So your assignment, pick a letter of your name, okay? And if you want an A+, 50 different versions of that letter, okay? Uh, and you can do any one of these, but I'm just telling you, there's no reason you can't get 50. It's going to take some effort, but that's the point. You want to try different things. Use prompts, things that will give you different ideas. Use shape ideas. Think about putting letters in a border. Think about making letters that are negatives, okay? Think about making letters that are three-dimensional. La oh, last thing I forgot to mention is serif and sans serif. A serif is when a letter has these little feet on it. I'll just do a letter H, for example. Letter H. This is a serif when it's got these little pointy feet that are on the bottom of the H. Now, they can be pointy or they can be square. Those are called serifs. Okay, and there's a lot of letters that have that in that style. And serifs could be pointy, they could be square, they could be rounded, but the serif is these little feet. So think about when you're making your letters, do you want to include serifs? Or it's serif, or a letter that's sans serif means no serif. Okay, so this letter right here would be, uh, let's find one here, uh, well, this G, no serif. Okay, if I added this right here, I've just added a serif to it, or maybe a point right there. There's a serif, okay? Got that? So come up with a bunch of ideas. I want you to shoot for 50, that would be perfect. There's no reason you can't do it. Have fun, become creative, and maybe you'll come up with something like this that everybody will be able to recognize in a second as your logo, okay? Take care.